Humans. We all strive to be unique, and invariably, we are. Unfortunately, we all share a design flaw. Mouths and noses, sticky windpipes that attract and emit airborne viruses. COVID exploits this flaw ruthlessly. But what does COVID need most to survive? Our discord. It wants us divided. Washington DC, Amelia the Unrest is now literally at the president's front door. Confused. And then I see the disinfectant where it knocks it out in a minute. And is there a way we can do something like that by injection? Now, I was asking a question sarcastically to reporters like you just to see what would happen. Angry. You literally cannot mandate somebody to wear a mask and you? Doctor are going to be arrested for crimes against humanity. I'll tell you another reason I'd hate masks. Most child molesters love them. This provides just enough mouths and noses for its survival. Look no further than the White House. Few people who attended the Rose Garden event on September 26th wore masks, and the chairs were spaced close together. Besides Trump and First Lady Melania Trump, they include Utah Republican Senator Mike Lee, who was seen hugging and interacting with other people. The data speak for themselves. We had a super spreader event in the White House, and it was in a situation where people were crowded together and were not wearing masks. It follows that COVID's biggest fear is our unity. And how do we need to unify? Around science. No one can argue science makes our civilization possible. It has revolutionized food, healthcare, defense, everything. Remove science and we're screwed. But certain people deny science when it suits them. Masks required. But that didn't stop Ruby Musso from going inside. Employees repeatedly asked Musso to leave. No, nope, not leaving. Nazis. Look at these Nazis. It's Jeffco policy. Get out. It's, it's not a law. This is Jeffco. Get out. Nazis. Harassing me to wear masks. You guys are violating federal law. You yeah. get that? You're, you're I coming feel close friends. To you're coming close Back to me. These are science hypocrites. One day, they attack science when it gets in their way. I want to start on what the president said about coronavirus testing. When you do testing to that extent, you're going to find more people, you're going to find more cases. So I said to my people, slow the testing down, please. <laughs> Come on now, Jake. You did know, it was tongue in cheek. Did the Come president. On Come on now. That was tongue in cheek. Please. The next day, they ask science for survival. I just left Walter Reed Medical Center, and it's really something very special. The doctors, the nurses, the first responders, and I learned so much about coronavirus. I didn't feel so good, and now I'm better, and maybe I'm immune, I don't know. Our world has been full of science hypocrites for a very long time. But Bill Nye, the science guy, said, skeptics of global warming suffer from the psychological delusion of cognitive dissonance. So we okay. in the science community are looking for an explanation why Climate change deniers, or extreme skeptics, uh, do not accept the overwhelming scientific evidence for climate change. The core question, from what I can tell, is why the change? Is it part of the endless cycle of climate change, or is human activity causing it? And it seems an open question, not a settled it's, question, to what degree human activity is causing that. Is that it's not, not an a, open It's question? not an open question, it's a settled question. Human activity is causing okay. climate change. There are downright apocalyptic images coming out of Australia right now. A massive brush fire is now within 15 kilometers of downtown Sydney, the city under a catastrophic fire warning for the first time in its history. There's never been a fire season this bad in California. Holiday makers became trapped after the fire cut off the Mammoth Pool Reservoir. There's fire on all sides, all around us, all the roads. We need to challenge these people and ask that they choose. Do you trust in the scientific method or not? The president of the United States is the, in the most secure bubble in the world, and he's still got it. So wear the damn mask and follow the science. 
We've made the masks a political issue, and it's not a political issue. It's a public health issue.